All right. Hi, welcome to the talk on the topic of how to pick the next front-end framework for your project. Let me first introduce myself. I'm Tommy Mochnik, lead front-end developer at TimeTech. Um, I have over 12 years experience in web development and I came to TimeTech almost eight years ago with just some basic CMS knowledge, but then grew into a lead who helped uh, transfer from an old framework, uh, XJS, to React. Before I start, uh, just a quick preview of what I'm going to talk about. Uh, so first, a quick uh, introduction, followed by why and when. To switch, how to switch, uh, finally making the decision. Uh, I will also briefly talk about prototyping and in the end, enjoying the new framework. A quick word about my company. So TimeTech is the leading time and attendance uh, software as a service provider, uh, which empowers everyone to focus on the most valuable resource, that's time. Uh, we are providing a mobile and uh, web desktop clients for our software to over 80,000 users. Uh, first, a short background story. Uh, we are a service provider with a long-living complex product. Uh, we are stable. Uh, we have stable and continuing growing uh, customer base. We still provide new features, uh, customization, and work on improvements uh, all the time. And we were put in front of a dilemma. Uh, stick with the current framework, uh, slowly migrate, or start from scratch. And yes, we then decided for the option three. Uh, so just want to clear some things before we start. What I'm not going to talk about is if you should use a framework, if you should go with vanilla JS or write your own framework. I'm also not going to tell you which framework is the best or what tools are the best and why. And I can also not give you any advice how to convince your management to actually do the switch. Um, now that we have the baseline uh, covered, let's jump right into the why and when. Why would even someone want to switch a framework? Uh, biggest issue or most pressuring one is unsupported framework. Uh, they change every day. Some are better built than others, and those then eventually fade out and uh, yeah, are considered outdated. Uh, probably one of the most common uh, reasons is also old code base that is uh, hard to maintain. No one knows what's going on with that. And uh, it's not covered with uh, any automatic tests. Um, some might also face issues with performance that they cannot uh, solve with the current framework. Or I um, already mentioned some frameworks are better built uh, modern and more fun to work with, and uh, others are not. And that's why the job market is actually changing or shifting that um, some developers just don't want to work with old frameworks anymore. Um, now that we, want, we know uh, that we want to change or switch the framework, uh, when is actually the correct time to do the switch? In my opinion, uh, you should have a stable product with enough revenue to cover the cost of the rewrite. Uh, changing the framework just because a new one was released yesterday is, in my opinion, not the best solution because uh, you should have a product, you should have a, uh, customers that are using it and to actually then, yeah, get paid and be able to, to cover the costs. Uh, you should have a clear vision. Um, or like a feature freeze on the current state, what you are going to still support in the previous one or what will be uh, migrated, um, what should be then in the end done with the new framework. Um, you also have to have resources. Uh, rewriting a framework or like your product with a new framework is really demanding on the developers. Uh, so you have to have the development resources to be able to afford the uh, change. Um, and of course, everyone should be on board with that change. So from developers to, to management. And um, yeah, so with all big changes, 
the longer do you wait, uh, the harder it gets in the end. Okay, now we know that we want to switch. We have a rough idea when to switch. Uh, let's actually then find out what's maybe one of the best uh, approaches to do, to do it. Uh, I recommend to do uh, in-deep research. Uh, what are the, as I already said, what are the requir requirements? Uh, are we just changing the look and feel of the app? Are we rewriting the whole, uh, just, or maybe just rewriting the, the, the framework? So it will look the same, but with uh, different, let's say, background. background. Um, what components do we need? What views, what technologies, and so on do we need? Uh, then the next step is to actually see what is out there, what frameworks are available, um, what are the trends and what developers actually want to use in the future. Uh, as, as I said, is there a job market for the framework? Uh, how likely is it that someone is already using it, knows it, and um, how it will then in the end uh, fit in the current stack? Uh, and uh, it's not just the framework switch, it's also a knowledge switch. So uh, uh, learning a new, uh, new framework is time consuming. So uh, do all developers maybe already have some experience with some of the frameworks that would be uh, beneficial in the beginning because you could kickstart the, the project sooner. And in the end, uh, yeah, important for, was also important for us to, to actually ask the team uh, get their opinions and uh, yeah, decide on, on that. Um, so what were our requirements? Uh, for us, it was important that it has a, it has a future and it has a stable uh, code base, user base, I mean. Uh, we needed components like grids, uh, dialogues, calendars, uh, and advanced data views. Um, those are then either built in or as add-ons. Uh, for us, it was also important that we get development support or development tools to support the developers um, to compile or whatever. Um, we also check the cost if it's not of open source project, how much is it, uh, if there are additional components or libraries that have to be uh, purchased. Uh, and maybe one of the uh, requirements that is maybe missed is uh, good documentation. It is really important that the uh, docu documentation is easy to use, uh, up-to-date and understandable. So, Anyone ever working with uh, front-end frameworks probably knows uh, that there are as many frameworks at their, as there are developers. Um, so how the hell should we then actually pick the right one for us? Um, depending on the project, uh, most probably we will be looking in the mainstream uh, frameworks. Um, but still, where to start? Uh, I would suggest that um, trends and surveys uh, are a good starting point. So, um, stateofjs.com is doing yearly uh, surveys. They are asking developers what they want to work with, what they are working with, which frameworks they enjoy or hate, and uh, also tools and so on. And uh, how popular it is, how, how big is the community. And if you look at the graph, uh, we can clearly see the winner here. Um, so that's an easy pick. So it is, we are done, right? Yeah, it's not that easy, I would say. Um, it's not easy, yeah, but it gives you a rough, uh, rough outline where the future goes, where people knowledge is moving. And um, there's always room for less known uh, frameworks, but um, the risk that it gets outdated is a bit higher. Um, so setting the trends and opinions aside, uh, we can also measure some of the, the indicators uh, based on some, some uh, hard facts and raw data. 
uh, like for example, how big is the community, who is standing behind the project, uh, GitHub activities and statistics, uh, version cycles, uh, who, is, who from the bigger names is using it, a uh, number of tutorials, videos, blog posts and so on. And uh, of course, yeah, a number of job postings, um, which is uh, especially important for a growing, growing company because if you're looking for new developers and they are using some frameworks that are more known, it will be highly, highly likely that uh, you will uh, get them more easy. Uh, so what would it be then the best approach to, to combine all this data? For us, it was a big spreadsheet. Um, in the end, we are engineers. Uh, we can measure things easily. Uh, so we just use different weights for different uh, things, uh, which we find uh, important. Uh, so how did, we, uh, how did we tackle it? Uh, we wrote down all the raw data, the trends, the survey results, opinions, pluses, minuses, and in the end evaluated it. Uh, for us, it was important uh, who is standing behind the project, because that would give some more um, calmness in the, in the future. Uh, how active the community is, so how how much is it used, uh, how many stars it has on GitHub and so on, uh, what uh, UI components are already in the box, do we have to have, uh, to, have to purchase or get some more, and uh, in the end we also then took a look at uh, state management and performance topics. Based on that first the drill down, we could already eliminate uh, some of those choices, and we were left with the big tree that probably everyone knows. Um, it's highly likely that you will get the same decision if you have a, a bigger project. Um, so you even might start the evaluation from this point on. Uh, if not, I would still suggest that uh, you remove some or eliminate some of the choices early on to then have better results or have a, uh, yeah, better results at the end. Uh, but in the end, we picked those three uh, mainly on future-proofness uh, and available resources. Uh, so more or less the raw data, uh, hard facts with, the, with a pinch of uh, trends. Um, so that we now can concentrate on, all it, on the three, uh, we, started to ch we started checking uh, the fit into our stack and the company. Uh, that means we. Uh, ho then that means that we will check how it can integrate in current stack. Do we need uh, additional infrastructure or any tools? Uh, does it mean a large knowledge uh, knowledge shift? Uh, because yeah, we were switching from XJS, so that would mean that uh, a lot of developers would have to learn a new framework and. Uh, and we will also have to probably hire some experts to uh, easily kick off the switch. Um, so for us, it was the highest priority that we choose a framework um, that the current front-end team would willing to work with. Um, so that's why we then decide to make an internal survey. We ask our developers to share the, their skill, uh, skill sets and experience on those three after uh, getting the data, we found out that we can al already uh, eliminate one of the frameworks because employees just had more knowledge on the other two. Uh, this decision might different from project to project, but for us it meant that uh, the initial kickoff would be easier with the knowledge at hand. So there are only two left now. Um, beside the knowledge lack, Angular was also showing the most resistant in the community because of major rewrites and steeper learning curve. So now we get to the final battle. Um, what we then decided between those two, we actually then ask our developers uh, what they think. Uh, what should, uh, what would they rather work with? 
uh, in my opinion, it should never be just a top-down decision. The, the developers should also have a voice. Uh, yeah, so for TimeTech, it was important that we listen to the experts, the front-end experts, and trust them, uh, as in the end, they will have to work with the framework. So it's now time to make the decision. Um, for us, the winner is was React. Uh, based on all the data, surveys, feedback, and discussion, uh, we could then make a decision that we can stand behind. Um, additionally, to the pick of the framework, uh, we also decided to start the project uh, on TypeScript base. Uh, that's actually one thing that we did not consider in the beginning, but should be one of the major criteriums. Uh, before we could switch, we wanted to make some prototypes uh, to get everybody on board with React. So we organized a two-day company hackathon. The goal was really simple, create a proof of concept for a feature um, that, we, that way we could see how fast we can adopt it, uh, how much actual knowledge we already have uh, in the team and uh, we could more easily say if we made the correct decision. Uh, did we choose the right one? At this point, I hope we did. Uh, it's hard to know or even not possible. Uh, that's why I uh, suggest that the team does uh, cycles of, of observation, uh, evaluation and reconsideration. If they see that they are hitting a limit, technical limit or they just have a feeling it's maybe not the best decision, switch fast and uh, without hard feelings. Um, if everything goes as planned and we are sure to kick off the product uh, with the new framework, it's actually then time to enjoy it. Uh, so for us, that meant that we came to new dilemmas, dilemmas uh, how to actually that extent react to our needs. Uh, so we started gathering uh, new data, picking additional tools and libraries, of course, new and exciting ones. Um, this was then done between the developers itself. So we were communicating what we want. Uh, we did quick evaluations with short proof of concepts. And by the end, we had this list. So for state management, we use Redux, routing with React Router, Material UI for the UI and base components, uh, Luxon as a date wrapper, uh, RxJS for callback based code, JS plus testing uh, library for the automated tests, our own so uh, open source project for communicating with the backend, Electron for the desktop clients, full calendar for calendar view and of course, GitHub pipelines for all the fancy running the tests, linting, and of course, deploying to production. Final words. Um, one thing before closing, uh, it's important to always listen to your team. Uh, if something has to change, find a solution to, that works for everyone. Um, that's why at TimeTech, uh, each employee opinion matters. We, with weekly front-end tea parties, we discuss new libraries, new tools, how we can include them in the project and get the best out of it. Uh, we gather info, make proof of concepts, vote on changes and incorporate them as soon as possible. To summarize everything once more, so do your research. Uh, research the market and the requirements, drill down on the available data, ask your team, uh, make a choice and prototype it and in the end, enjoy it. I hope this was helpful to someone that is dealing with the same dilemma uh, we had at TimeTech and have a nice day. Bye.